<clears throat> so as I have mentioned in the previous sessions that we are studying my medical sensor. Of course, studying the sensor itself is important. Uh, how can the sensor convert or transduce in <clears throat> information from the physical domain into the or chemical domain or biological domain into the electronic domain. However, since we are aspiring, aspiring, yeah, we aspire to be biomedical engineers, we also should know uh, what signal that actually we are interested in uh, so that we can determine yeah, for a particular application, we can determine what sensors fits the best what sensor fits the best for that particular application. We can design and we can, if not designing, at least we can implement the most suitable or the correct, the most appropriate sensor for that particular biomedical application. In order for us to be able to do that, we need to know also how do the biosignals originate. Yeah, We need to know how does they, how do they originate? Where do they come from, from inside our body? What physiological phenomena inside our body and, uh, <clears throat> determine the occurrence of certain bias signals? And how are those signals being influenced by the anatomy and the structure of our body so that we know whether the signal we are capturing through our sensors are correct or not? Are they the correct signal that we want or are they noises also from the body or maybe from the surrounding? So here in this uh, chapter, in the session, as well as maybe uh, I think it will continue to next week's session because the, the material is a little bit long. We will explore the origin of this biosignal <clears throat> and the related physiological phenomena. Okay, we will study the fundamentals of bicycle. We will study the definition first, and then the model of bicycle. <laughs> then some historical aspects of bicycle. Where do they come from? Uh, no, not historical aspects here. How people in the beginning, yeah, uh, before the advent of electronics, capture and record this bicycle. Then what? How do they classify the biosignal? What is the classification or types of these biosignals yeah, from our body? And then the trends in the future. So after we study the history, then the classification, and then in the future, what is the trend in monitoring biosignal? <laughs> in which sensor will play an important role? Yeah? Sensor will play an important role to the uh, monitoring to the detection, the diagnostic of bicycle. Okay. So, <clears throat> for example, here, <clears throat> if uh, this is a human, yeah, if you have a human here, yeah, uh, a human here, and it is a it has a functions, yeah. It has or many functions there, uh, and then the human is functional, and we would like to use sensor here, yeah. Uh, so, well, of course here it is uh, captured as a, as a what do you call it as a hand, but actually this is just a symbol to that to symbolize sensor that detect or diagnose or capture all the signal coming from this human body, and then. <clears throat> The registered biomedical signal is what we call as the biosignal. Okay, so <clears throat> here maybe for example we can have uh, blood BP is a uh, blood pressure, yeah. and then respiration. This is during inhalation and uh, exhalation. Uh, MSNA, I'm not sure. EK, EKG is electrocardiography. MSNA, I think this is related to muscle, muscle, yeah. So here we define a bias signal as a description of a physiological phenomenon, yeah. So inside the body itself, there might there there, there are many physiological phenomena, 
the heart is beating. <coughs> Blood is being pumped from the heart into the whole of the body. Then muscles are contracting or relaxing. Then uh, what else? Uh, the, the, the lung is uh, <coughs> acquiring the, the air and then also exhaling the air. But how to, how to describe this physiological phenomena, okay? Uh, later we will study in the history that in the past people used to do descriptive descriptive wording to describe this uh, phenomena. For example, in the in the form of sound, uh, the, the heart beating like what uh, like what sounds. But those those descriptions are usually very subjective and very temporary. When the sub when the when the physician, for example, listen to the beating of the heart. At one time, he might perceive it differently in different time. Of course, this will de will depend on the condition of the patient or the subject itself, but then also depends on the condition or the state of the physician. So this this become very subjective and temporary. It cannot be an objective recording. So that is why the sensor here acts as a tool to make that registration of the biomedical signal more objective and more permanent. So here we can define the bicycle as a description of particular physiological phenomena. Okay. Okay, then so in the past, this is the basic procedure for the assessment of bicycle. There is no recording, for example. People use their own uh, senses yeah, to assess the patients of the subject's physiological condition, to register the, the subject's physiological condition. Yeah, for, for example, the most straightforward way is for a physician is by using his or her eyes to assess the, uh, pre, uh, the, the, the appearance yeah, uh, the, of the subject itself. For example, the subject looks healthy, the subject looks uh, looks uh, what you call it healthy and and and, 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 and tall etc no nothing seems to be uh, imperfect nothing to be nothing seems to be wrong or on the other hand if the patient is sick the sub the the patient, patient may describe the patient as he looks pale he looks weak etc etc so this is the first way of the physician even until now it is still being used of course yeah, by physician to describe the condition of the patient. Then later on with the, uh, with the development of sensors, with the development of electronics, with development of different various kinds of equipment, <clears throat> yeah, as I mentioned yesterday, the biomedical engineering itself uh, in progressing, then the physicians start to apply biomedical sensor. And uh, so previously uh, the description was very subjective like that. And now a days <clears throat> to, to understand the, whether a person or subject is healthy or not, you just check at their heart signal register through e ECG, for example, yeah? ECG or e e EKG, electrocardiography. Okay, like this. So it is now being recorded. So previously, the description is something subjective and may vary between one physician to another. Now, if the subject is the same, one vision to another because it is being made objective by the use of biomedical sensor. So this is one uh, application or one particular benefit of using biomedical sensor. <clears throat> now your homework, for example, <clears throat> is exemplifies one of the use of biomedical sensor yeah, on the chest for the registration of the body sound and the stethoscope. Yeah, and <clears throat> the chest piece, yes. The chest is basically the, uh, what do you call it, the, the sensor part yeah, of the stethoscope. So the chest piece will register any bioacoustical signal from the body. Yeah, bioacoustical here is actually the more scientific terminology for sound, the body sound. Either it is strong in density, yeah, like snoring sound, which is very strong in density or the sound from the lung, yeah, which is expanding and uh, contracting, 
but also the weak intensity decay sound like the hard sound yeah the hard sound all can be registered through the chest piece of a stethoscope yeah the chest piece itself consists of diaphragma here yeah. uh, many of many of you relates that the diaphragma uh, is sensitive your answer yeah uh, to the high frequency signal actually it is more sensitive towards low frequency yeah please differentiate between frequency and intensity yeah? intensity of the sound is different than frequency yeah, re re frequency refers to the pitch of the sound yeah, remember if you are playing piano yeah, or playing uh, guitar yeah, or playing uh, what do you call it uh, drum, uh, you, you know with the, with the high frequency usually the the piano yeah, the the wood that that is being hit yeah to produce the sound is uh, shorter yeah so in this case the diaphragma is the bright diaphragma is the longer part actually the longer part is more sensitive towards the low frequency the bass pitch yeah then actually it is the the bell the the the, the, the harder structure one it is more uh, sensitive towards the high frequency part okay then we have the coupling <clears throat> the coupling part which is basically the bell and as well as the tubing itself and finally the conversion part or the display part yeah, in the homework yeah, the one that is being put into our ear the ear piece or if we make an electronic stethoscope it is in the form of microphone that can convert transform the sound signal into the electronic signal yeah the signal of pcg uh, phonocardiography yeah phonocardiography means the heart the sounds of the heart yeah so this all this originate from this uh, different sources within our body yeah? the bicycle sources either could be the heart sound the lung sounds or the snoring sound so the signal travels or propagates from the bicycle source in our body okay here the bicycle signal source from our body and then propagate propagate here through the tissue here this is the propagation here. this is the tissue this is the tissue uh, the muscles the meat uh, what call it the, the the fat the skin yeah from that is uh, located that are located between the signal source and the sensor and there's a coupling yeah the coupling here is done by the whole uh, sensor piece here conversion here is done by the transducer yeah. transducer as the name implies transduce or convert the signal from one energy form to another energy form after which the signal can be registered and yeah, recorded into any means yeah if it could be <coughs> recorded as a graph on a paper or could be also as electronic signal so <coughs> The signal flows like this: the heart valves open, and uh, producing heart sound. The hearts uh, open, and then producing sound. Then uh, the air turbulences uh, inside the branching way of the lung produces also lung sound. So the heart valves producing the heart sound. Uh, the snoring sound comes from the elastic oscillation of the pharyngeal walls in the upper way of our respiration. Then the sounds propagate through the tissue and undergo attenuation because of the long distance from the source and damping by the medium. Yeah, the uh, the so the tissue here, the the the, the muscles, the skin, the fat dampen the sound. Dampen means the attenuates the sound. Uh, amplitude. Then the coupling and amplification of the sound is done by the stethoscope chest piece. Okay, it, is, it is coupled and then amplify also. So if you look back to the diagram, the, the bell also amplify because this focus the uh, energy from the diaphragm into this channel, yeah, the output channel. So after which then uh, it could the, the sound could travel through this channel. <clears throat> so the conversion is then done by an electroacoustic transducer. 
for example a microphone yeah which converts the acoustical pressure vibration into electrical so uh, usually, uh, usually this is what we call as the sensor yeah. but in this particular part the sensor is the whole test piece in this particular case of biomedical equipment the sensor is the whole uh, the whole thing could be set as a sensor so while then the microphone at the end of the of this line could be called as transducer yeah transducer is more specific transducer is uh, transducer is uh, what do you call it uh, a device yeah that that it converts or transform energy from one uh, and one form of energy to uh, another form of energy yeah and while sensor so transducer could also be actuator when for example like your screen yeah your 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 computer screen or your smartphone screen is also a transducer but it is not capturing signal rather it is displaying the signal yeah and that is why it is called as actuator so a transducer can be uh, classified as sensor or uh, actuator when the transducer capture signal from the surrounding uh, energy or other from the surrounding physical signal or uh, chemical or biological signal into electronics we call it as a sensor when on the other when it converts the other way around from electronic signal into a particular physical signal or chemical or biological signal it is called an actuator so example of actuator will be our monitor yeah, the computer monitor uh, or the computer screen the loudspeaker the loudspeaker is also a transducer it is a an actuator <clears throat> then yeah, let's do a modeling yeah a uh, model a permanent bias signal with a source in uh, in the body uh, excuse me for Okay, <clears throat> so the previous, yeah, the previous signal uh, propagation, yeah, origin that originated from the source, then propagate through the tissue, the human body, and then coupled into the uh, the diaphragma, etc., until it is being converted and registered. It could also be modeled, yeah, in the in form in the in the form of an electrical circuit like this. Yeah, I hope you have you all already uh, passed and the uh, electrical electrical engineering one and two, right? So the source of the bias signal can be a model as a voltage source here. Yeah, yeah, remember here, alternate uh, in this case it will be an alternating source, alternating current, yeah, alternating current, alter or alternating voltage source. Then the propagation loss is modeled as a impedance input impedance zi so these are these two the voltage source as well as the propagation loss are located within the body yeah below the skin after that the sensor is being attached yeah, in this in this particular case of course yeah, it will be different than if it were the implantable sensor yeah, the model will be a little bit different so here then <clears throat> we put the sensor attached to the skin so in this case there is also another coupling yeah, another coupling the signal coming out from the skin coupled to the uh, transducer the microphone in the chest piece case yeah the stethoscope case but the signal has to travel from the diaphragma to the bell to the tubing until it is being registered or converted by the microphone and uh, registered to uh, as a signal as an electronic signal so the source of the bio signal can be modeled as ut here equals to large u cosine omega t plus psi u yeah so this will be the amplitude and then this is the frequency this is the phase of the signal and the u here is a complex amplitude yeah yeah so it means that it could also because there's a damping there so it is in the form of uh, oscillating signal but also with particular 
amplification or attenuation. So the magnitude u and then it has an angular frequency omega, which is equal to two times pi times f. F here is the oscillating frequency, and phase psi u such that u t here equals the real of this uh, the magnitude u times uh, exponent of j omega t. Yeah, remember your mathematics. So this part itself is basically uh, uh, u, then here it cosine uh, omega t, right? Plus j sine omega t. And this is itself is this, yeah? the u at times exponent j psi u with the phase. Okay. The propagation losses is model as z1 here. Yeah, it is also an, a complex magnitude z1, the real number times the, the phase exponent j psi one. So this is all in phaser, uh, phaser, uh, uh, phaser symbol symbols. Yeah. The coupling and conversion losses here is symbolized as z2. Is it, it is also a complex. Uh, complex magnitude, complex nanometer equals to the Z2 times exponent J psi 2. Okay. So then the registered by signal here, this is symbolized here as the registered current yeah, using an ampere meter. Yeah, this is the model. Of course, in the actual uh, case, it, in the in the case, in the stethoscope case, it is a microphone. Okay. The registered by signal I is represented as the resulting current IP flowing through this ampere meter, the registered one, equal to I times cosine omega t plus psi one. The complex amplitude here is the I underscore equals to I times exponent uh, J psi one. So here is basically only the real part of this uh, of this thing, yeah. So this i uh, underscore exponent uh, j omega t. So this equals to uh, i exponent j psi one uh, cosine uh, omega t plus uh, j i exponent j psi one sin omega t. Okay, so uh, oops. This part, the one that is being is only the only the real part. Yeah, this, the one that is being taken here in the in the calculation is only the real part. The it here only the real part of this whole i uh, this complex magnitude. So according to the Ohm's law, then this registered current equals to the the, the complex voltage uh, source here divided by the impedances z1 plus z2 okay <clears throat> so the losses here are usually capacitive and ohmic yeah? uh, so the physiological phenomena of interest here are hidden in u as well as in z1 so depending on what signal we, we want to measure yeah yeah, for example, by attaching electrode, for example, if we want to detect the heart signal, the heartbeat signal the, as the bio, biological source, the bicycle source, of course, what we want to know is the U, yeah, the, the, the voltage source, in this case, heart. But sometimes what we want to know is the physiological phenomena is uh, what lies in between the signal source and the skin, yeah, in the in the coupling. In that case, the impedance itself. The impedance itself here represents the the tissue, yeah, the tissue between the the signal source and the sensor. Yeah, sometimes what we want to know, the information we want to know is maybe uh, whether the tissue is okay or not, uh, or maybe there is some some uh, what we call it uh, malignancy. Yeah, malignancy or any other disorder inside in the tissue itself. So in that case, then what we what we are interested to know is the Z1, the impedances. 
And then we can make the u to be constant, for example, and then look at the variation of z1. If, if, if the information we want to know is the issue itself, yeah, the, the loss of the signal. On the other hand, of again, if we want to know the signal source within the body itself, the, the, like the heart or the muscle, etc., then what we are want to capture is the U, the signal, the biosignal source. Yeah. So depending on which physiological phenomena of interest we want to register or we want to capture. And this is what makes a biomedical sensor a bit, compl a bit complicated and complex compared to if the sensors were used to detect on a different application, other application, non-biomedical application. Yeah, uh, electric, uh, let's say sound, for example. Yeah, If we were to use similar device like stethoscope, but we, we, we use it to diagnose on or detect the condition of a machine or engine, then usually we really, we, are, we already know beforehand the characteristic of an engine. Where does the sound come from? Yeah, it used to come from, for example, let's say this, if it is a car engine, it comes from the piston that is moving uh, up and down inside inside the engine block. Yeah, but and if there is a if there is a, a, a strange sounds, then we know that it might come from the other part of the engine. Yeah. And depending on the frequency of the sound, then we can locate that particular uh, strange sounds. But in the case of body. Since uh, both you know, the signal source can vary and the propagation loss also can vary, that makes the analysis quite complex yeah, for biomedical application. That is why, for example, you know, with ECG itself, electrocardiography can be captured uh, using the simple, using the usual electrode, like uh, from the chest and the arm, uh, the chest and the left arm or right arm, but also can be taken with with the leg, for example. So uh, in complete clinical electrocardiography, usually they use even un up until 12 electrodes yeah, configuration. So this is because the cardiologists would like to really know uh, where particular signal come from. Yeah? Is it really from the heart or from the other tissue part of the body? Wow. <clears throat> um, sir? Yes. Can I ask? So uh, we just have to change the U with voltage or current like that, based on what uh, we want to search. Is can it you, correct? Can you repeat again? What um, you don't understand your, your meaning? So, um, so if we want to uh, measure the heartbeat or something, we just change it to voltage or current. Is that correct or <coughs> I have wrong? No, you, you, you have wrong impression here. So it is not that if we want to measure the heartbeat, we change it with uh, current or, or, or what, yeah? What we, what we meant, what we meant here is this is the uh, modeling of the system. So a model, oh, okay. a circuit model, yeah? So that is why we learn electrical engineering one. It is not just for the sake of building electrical circuit, but the method developed there, in electrical network, yeah, or Ohm's law, the impedances, admittance, Kirchhoff law, etc., can be also implemented to model a physical phenomena. Yeah, the the heartbeat itself basically is an electrical phenomena. Why it is a heartbeat? Later, if we learn about heartbeat, basically it is the contraction, yeah, the contraction of muscle of the heart, the muscle heart, and the contraction occurs because of the change of the electrical potential within parts of the heart. Yeah, so that there is a contraction and expansion of the heart's chamber. So in, in this particular case, it is modeled as a voltage source. But it does not mean that the heart is replaced with a voltage source, no. But it is modeled as a voltage source. Why do we do modeling? So that then we can analyze the system using the uh, circuit law. Yeah, using the circuit law. So in this particular example, for example, then we can estimate, yeah, we can model the captured um, signal from in, in, in our sensor as current. And the current magnitude will be uh, can be calculated or analyzed using the Ohm's law. 
as the voltage source divided by the impedances. Impedances come from the propagation and the uh, coupling. Okay, so later when we implement it into a, into a system, okay, we develop a sensor is and then we capture the signal. Then we can predict and interpret the signal. Yeah, if we have certain number of current, does this originate from the source? Is it originating from the propagation loss, or is it does it come from the coupling and conversion loss? So we use modeling in order that we can comprehend what is happening uh, when we do measurement. Yeah, so uh, we can explain what happened in that measurement. Do you understand until now? Yes, sir. Okay. So similar when we do in engineering circuit, yeah, this is also a model. And in actual circuit, this will be a voltage source that could be an alternating current uh, voltage source can be battery, etc. The impedance can be we we can implement it using resistor and capacitor, okay, resistor, capacitor, or inductor, similar with this one, resistor or capacitor, inductor, etc. And this will be an ammeter, the actual one. But when we do modeling in on paper, this can be drawn as like this, right? U Z one Z two A. So that then we can calculate mathematically what will happen. And, and if something happened, is it happening according to our prediction by the mathematical model or not? If not, what is not the same then with the mathematical model? So then we can adjust the system. Okay, so because we are engineer, engineer and scientists, especially mathematical scientists, tend to model the actual physical phenomena is it clear enough yes sir okay yeah thank Let's you continue a different model is like this <clears throat> so this is the case for example if you are doing uh, eit or ecvt this is what electrical injection tomography Electrical injection tomography. What is it? Please Google yourself. <laughs> I will not explain it now. Okay, ECVT, electrical capacitance, volume tomography, for example, volume tomography. But this this model can also be used now for USG ultrasonography. Yeah, as I mentioned yesterday, yeah, when I I show the picture of. Uh, a nurse yeah, undergoing ultrasonography inspection to a patient. Ultrasonography is a specific case of sensor where basically it is an active sensor. The transducer does not only capture the signal from the body, in the transducer that is attached to the body, but it also inject the signal to the body. Okay, So it has it is what we call as an active transducer. Because the active transducer acts as both actuator and sensor. One part of the transducer convert electrical signal, modulating signal into a acoustical signal, sounds yeah, with very high frequency. That is why it is called as ultrasound. And ultrasound, you know, is sounds with has more than 20 uh, kilohertz frequency. The the sound is being is tra uh, traversing the body. And then being scattered by the structure of the tissue inside our body, some some is lost as here, but some as some of the sound is reflected back to the direction of the transducer, and inside the transducer itself, the other part is sensor that capture back this electrical uh, that sound acoustical signal, convert it back into the electrical signal. So by comparing the injected electrical signal and the captured electrical signal from the transducer. The system will reconstruct the tissue, the image of the tissue, right? So here the information is the signal source yeah, does not come from the body. In the case of uh, ultrasound or also electrical injection tomography, it's also electrical capacitance volume tomography. The signal does not originate 
from the body, but originate from the equipment itself, from the ultrasonographic equipment itself, or EIT itself, ECVT itself. So this is the applied signal that comes from outside of the body. It injects that signal into the body using this coupling and conversion loss one, yeah, or uh, Z two dash. Then inside the body, there will be propagation loss. As I mentioned, some will be converted as heat, loss as heat. The other one will be scattered back. The scattered uh, signal goes to the, the other part of the transducer, which acts as the sensor. And there will be another coupling and conversion loss here, this part, yeah, Z2. And then it will be registered. The back signal, the, the, the reflected back by signal will be registered by the sensor. In this case, this is modeled as an ampere meter. The, the, the information that we want is the structure of the body, right? The structure of body is, is embodied or encrypted as this Z1, the propagation loss inside the body. So how we know the U here, then we capture, or we, get, we register the reflected by signal I here. Based on this two known, how can we, and we also know the coupling and conversions conversion loss part here and the coupling and conversion loss two here. We know this one, two, three, four. How, from there, how can we reconstruct the propagation loss inside the body? And reconstruct here, then it can be made as, for example, imaging, as image in the, in the case of ultrasonography, also EIT, also ECVT. MRI is also similar, uh, CT scan is also similar like this X-ray. Okay. So the bio signal is generated outside the body with an artificial signal source. Yeah. It, in the case of ultrasound, it will be a piezo electric source. Yeah, we will study later, uh, in later chapters about piezoelectricity signal or transducer. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> then there will be coupling and conversion losses. Z2 dash in the input side. So this is the input side. So even though this is drawn in this model as in different sides, yeah, left and right, but in reality, in real implementation, it could be uh, located side by side, like in the ultrasonography case. The actuator and the sensor of the ultrasound transducer is basically located next to each other. So the propagation losses Z1 in the body is modulated by a physiological phenomena of interest. So this the Z1 represents this mod, uh, physiological phenomena of interest. In the case of ultrasonography, yeah, uh, imaging ultrasonography, it would be the body structure. In the case of, for example, uh, sonocardiography. Sonocardiography is an instrumentation used to uh, determine the structure, uh, the work, the physiological phenomena of the heart. Then it will be in the form uh, of the heart working mechanism. Yeah? In the case of what electrical injection tomography, it is the tissue, tissue structure beneath the skin. In the case of X-ray, it is also the uh, heart tissue structure, the bone structure, etc. Then uh, there is this coupling and conversion losses on the other side, yeah, on the on the on the on the output side. Okay. So from there, from that model here, then the resulting induced by signal I. This model using Ohm's law, I equals to U under underscore divided by the series impedance, yeah, which is Z, Z1 here plus Z2 plus Z2 dash. This is basically known because this is something which is being engineered by us. This is also known. This will be known because this is come, this is, we can modul modulate the signal because the source now come from our device, not from the body. And this is what we registered. So then we are left with the Here, in change. So here is will be the 
signal that we are interested in. So that this we can construct it further as the either image or then the beating on the heart, etc. etc. Okay. This is another example. Yeah, this is another example of basically uh what do you call it? Uh an instrument with also artificially induced uh, signal. Excuse me. So the U here is characterize an incident artificial light. Yeah, this is what you call any uh, everyone knows it. This is a pulse oximeter used uh, to know the level of oxygen inside our body. This is in in nowadays this is particularly important because of uh, COVID nineteen yeah, uh, to monitor the oxygen level inside our blood to know wh whether our lung in, lung is functioning well or not. So this, this is basically also an active transducer because the signal doesn't originate from the body. The signal originates from the pulse oximeter itself because it carries an LED, a light source. Yeah. That uh, here the U is the incident artificial light coupled into the finger. The body here is our finger. Z1 is varies by the changing light absorption due to the pulsating blood volume. Yeah, the the depending on the content of the oxygen inside the blood, then it will have different uh, red wavelength absorption. Since since blood pulsations carry cardiac and respiratory information, since blood pulsation carry cardiac and respiratory information, the transmitted light characterized by eye reflects the cardio respiratory activity so uh, this is what this is we know this is from the device itself this is also from the device itself this is what we are interested to know the z1 which depends on the uh, changing light light absorption due to the pulsating blood volume mm -hmm. so pulse oximeter from pulse oximeter we know oxygen content we can also know the blood pulse yeah, the blood pressure okay So biosignals are used in both diagnosis and therapy. So the diagnosis is concerned with the assessment of the health status based on the biosignal. The therapy utilizes the biosignal as an objective feedback for selecting appropriate therapeutic measures, continuously monitoring their impact and improving their efficiency. So this is an example when uh, both diagnostic and therapeutic device is combined into one. This is a, a basically a glucose injector for diabetes mellitus patient. There is here the sensor part yeah, that is uh, monitoring the blood glucose level in the blood from the subcutaneous, subcutaneous blood, yeah, the blood vessels below the uh, skin. Then it transmits the level of the blood to this portable device, which will then inject uh, accordingly, the correct amount of insulin, if necessary, into the blood so also subsequent, subcutaneously or transcutaneously. So here, the diagnostic device registers the signal. Okay, <clears throat> so the the signal comes from this that one. Then it goes as a feedback for the adaptive treatment here. Yeah, this is the uh, the insulin pump, for example then injects the insulin into the body. The, the, the information, the Z1 here, will be the, the information about the blood glucose level in, uh, in the blood, yeah, the glucose level in the blood. Okay, is there any questions so far related to the modeling of biosignals, the definition of biosignals? No questions? If not, then uh, 